his goal was always to furnish a value at the best possible price for the consumer. We had tires stacked everywhere. I mean, there must have been only 10,000, 15,000 tires. I'd say our sales are getting pretty close to 700 million. It's mind-boggling to think of where the little town of Basel would be had there not been a Dunlap car. He's one of Mississippi's greatest success stories. He said, everybody says that I'm a really smart businessman, but he said, I, I think I'm a better judge of character. I can't even put into words what it's done for my life, what it's done for my family's life. And it would have been hard to find a better man to work for than, than Bob Dunlap. His two passions, in, in addition to business, are Boy Scouts and conservation. I don't know of anybody that does as much for reforestation as Mr. Bob does. Setting aside 12,000 acres of hardwood bottom land in, in the middle of the Mississippi River. It's a success story of restoration. This generosity is just incredible. And it, it keeps coming back to what are we going to do to help Mississippi? Bob knows in his heart that the reason he's where he is today is because of the people that are working there. Born November 8, 1929. They had a milk cow in town. They had uh, chickens and you raised a lot of your own food. They'd kill hogs over there. My grandmother made butter. It was just an entirely different world. There was just no money. Growing up, my father started automobile business with his first cousin named Hudson Kyle. And I still have that financial statement. Kyle put up $1,000, and he was a full partner with Daddy. Bob's daddy, Mr. Jack Dunlap, had the Chevrolet dealership. He had that dealership for years and was very successful. Dan and them over there selling were real aggressive. They sold used cars, all kind of cars, all through the Delta, all the way to Greenville. This property was a mule barn at that time. Then when the war started, it became a junkyard. You had to sell used cars and junk parts and old motors and everything because people couldn't get parts to go on the cars that they had. It was all going to the wall. Back then, we sold everything, tires and parts, paint, batteries. When I went off to college in fall of uh, 47, my father wanted me to go to Millsaps one year. He's paying tuition, so he got to choose the first two years, and the last two years, I go where I wanted to. And he picked Millsaps. That was a tough school down there. But after one year, the Korean War was going on, and he wanted me to come up to Ole Miss and get in the Naval ROTC. He was in the ROTC at the university, and so that when he graduated from the university, he went in as an ensign. They sent an officer down from D.C. to assign us what duty we are going to have. It was going to be sea duty. Another good buddy of mine up there, he had orders going to a ship going to the Mediterranean. We took this uh, personnel officer out of Washington to the officers' club and got him drunk. He switched the orders. My buddy went to the carrier going to the Pacific, and I went to the Everglades to go into the Mediterranean. That was a good deal. He said it was a two-year Mediterranean vacation. I've told people I should have been, I didn't have any money, but I should have been paying them. We'd hit Barcelona, Spain, French Riviera, Augusta Bay, Sicily, Naples, Athens, Greece, Istanbul, Turkey. How could you beat that? That Everglades is where I met Glenn McKittrick. Part of his responsibilities and the way he got to know Dad is they would drive into town in whatever port they were in and go to the bank and collect, you know, pick up the money to pay everybody on that ship, and they paid them in cash. And he said he'd have a 45 on his each, maybe one or two, I don't know, and they'd just walk along with a briefcase, just plumb full of money, take it back to the ship and pay everybody. Presumably there were hundreds and hundreds of people on that boat. And uh, so, so Bob had a 45, and he guarded Daddy and the money, and brought him to base from Mississippi, and guarded Daddy and the money for the rest of his life. I thought about staying in the Navy, but I kept thinking about I grew up with hunting and fishing and that kind of thing, and I just decided to come on back. I missed all that. When he got out of the Navy, he came back, and he didn't want to be in the automobile business either. He wanted to be over here with the parts department and the junk cars and the used cars and all of that sort of thing. But then he sort of branched off into the tire business. Daddy got out of the service a year before Bob. He wrote him a, a letter, and he made he contacted his dad and, and Mr. Jack Dunlap and Batesville and 
and sent mom and dad to Batesville, Mississippi to meet Jack Dunlap at Southside Chevrolet and he gave him a job until Bob got out of the service a year later and, and came back to Mississippi and they started building this tire company. He said, I'm going to furnish something that everybody needs all the time. And tire is one thing that people always need. He went to tire conventions and that sort of thing and started meeting people in the tire business and getting to know them and how exactly you did it. Started off with three or four folks working out of a mule barn, selling a few tires. When Daddy got into the business, he had veterans as, as salesmen, people that were in World War II and uh, they would do anything. Whatever needed to be done, they would do it. There were some tough people. Any of them that are still living, I've told them the Japs didn't stand a snowball chance in hell fighting them. They can forget it. There was no expectation of working an eight-hour day, you know, that everybody worked 10, 12, 14, 16 hours. When I first went there, we worked six days a week. Saturday was the busiest day of them all. Those guys would go out on Monday morning before daylight. They wouldn't come back to Friday afternoon late. They stayed out all week, and then they would come in every Saturday morning and have a, a sales meeting. Then they'd load up on Saturday, and they'd head back out. These guys were so dedicated to the customers that they had that they, they went out there and personally checked their orders to be sure that every tire that they had promised was going to be delivered was on that truck. And they would drive that truck home, they'd leave out on Monday morning and get their tires delivered. It's like a Swiss train. I mean, if we're going to be in Pontotoc at 7 o'clock, well, we're going to be there at 7 o'clock. Glenn McKittrick, Tommy Marshall, and others, they'd come up at night. We had so much paperwork, we'd get it done then, but it was somebody always there. And they absolutely didn't care how long it took. Hard work and being the best you could be is... It's just part of the Dunlap DNA. They didn't have a key to the Southside Chevrolet over there. They were open all the time. But it was two shifts, six in the morning, six at night, and one six at night, six in the morning. It's crazy. We work all the time just to survive. We sold tires to people all over North Mississippi. Everywhere I go, just about now, Memphis, Jackson, any place I see people I used to sell tires to. They were dedicated enough that we don't want to build a company, and they did build a company. They took care of the customer. That was the number one priority. You take care of your customer and you'll get more business. That's the way we always operate. Bob operated that way. You just don't see a lot of folks going into the tire business today. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's hard work. You get your hands dirty. As a child, Westmoreland Heights was almost like a company town. The majority of the people that lived in that subdivision worked for Dunlap and Kyle. All the families were kind of interconnected in some way. It was like an extended family almost. The two things that were constant in that town was the city of New Orleans train would come through and, and you'd hear that lonesome whistle blow. And the other thing was at 7.30 in the morning, that steam whistle would blow the Dunlap and Kyle Tire Company and that was the call to work. Oh. Oh, everybody in Batesville counted on that whistle from the retread department. It was part of the fabric of that community. Just having that steam whistle blow every day was uh, you know, just a sign that the world was still going around. We grew up hunting and fishing, you know, going to the lake, whatever we did. That was just We just thought that was normal. But it was always with company people. Back then, Bob walked miles when you were hunting. He, he didn't sit in a stand. That was no sitting. Dunlap and Cal included this part, the warehouse, it included the Chevrolet dealership, it included across the street where Dunlap and Cal Oil Company was, and it included the retread plant that was located on 51 at that time. We had a retread plant, and we were handling Goodyear tires. We were the biggest Goodyear dealer in the Memphis district at that time. We were selling so many Goodyear tires, they put me on a Goodyear dealer council and they'd fly me to Akron. He didn't like doing business with a major like that because they tell you how to do business and they send you literature and bill you for it and they tell you what to sell the tire for and he didn't want that sort of thing. He wanted to be his own businessman and do it the way that he wanted to do it. His goal was always to furnish a value at the best possible price for the consumer. Somebody would tell him, well, I got Michelin's on my car, best tire I've ever had. And he'd say, well, it's a dang good tire. There's no question about that. He said, but for what you're paying for the tire, I can sell you one for half the price. It's 85% is good.
We started building on Caulk Island in 2010. Now this is a 17,000 square foot, he calls it a cabin. We call it the little bass pro shop. Those trees are about 30 years old. 100 years from now, those will really be something. In the fall of 57, it started raining and never quit. Raining the whole damn fall, they couldn't get no cotton out. I do not know how he survived, but I saw that. After watching his father have to go and take these people's combines and cotton pickers and tires off of vehicles and stuff that he never, ever had the heart to do that. I wanted no part of that. Man, I, I, maybe that helped put him down, but he had a stroke in 1960. When Mr. Jack had his stroke, they broke up the company. Bob took the tire business, John Ed took the Chevrolet dealership at Oxford, and uh, John Cow took the Dunham Cowell Oil Company and Southside. That's when we started, really, in 1960. Sears Roebuck was so big in those days, and they, they sold all state tires. And I had a lot of good friends. And I had one up in Akron named Paul Klein. He and another guy up in the Northeast controlled all those tires. And he would ship us as many as we ever wanted to order and never questioned our credit. We had tires stacked everywhere. I mean, there must have been only 10,000 or 15,000 tires. And that got us started. They formed this group called the Cordovan Group, and the idea was to have buying power to be able to order vast quantities of tires and each one of them get some of those tires. And then they decided, well, let's, let's do this thing a little different. Let's take 50 cents a tire and 25 cents a battery to keep in a kitty to form a real wholesale operation. And so that, that ran up to be quite a bit of money over a few years. And that's when they formed TBC, Tire and Battery Corporation. I always said I'd rather have half of a big deal than all of nothing. We've had recessions. Sure. And his main thing is we don't choose to participate in a recession. Everybody else can participate if they want to, but don't have Kyle is not going to participate. But he always felt like the tire business was uh, fairly recession proof, that there'd be swings in the economy up and down. But uh, when the economy was bad, people held cars longer, which meant they needed to buy tires more. He was a good businessman, that's for sure. <laughs> and it would have been hard to find a better man to work for than, than Bob Dunlap. When we first met, and his retail business was a small part of his business, he said to me, he doesn't believe in advertising. Well, I never heard of a retailer who doesn't believe in advertising. And then as time went on, I was amazed at what results he was getting out of retail without advertising. In his hands, the level of success was beyond the norm. And that method of operating is how he operates today. He pays vast attention to figures. You could take him a financial statement, he'd look at that thing and thumb through it, go down that sheet and say, this doesn't total up. Just that quick, it's not right. Redo it. The first time I met Mr. Bob, I was with my dad, and we went to the recap store in Batesville, which was, was Dunlap and Kyle, as I recall, because we bought all of our tires there. And from that point on, my family and I bought recap tires until that plant closed. And then we started buying Dunlap and Kyle tires but long before Gateway was created. And we now buy them from Gateway. The Gateway Corporation would be your retail stores. You had Dunlap and Cow as your wholesale division. So as he got into retail, that made a big difference. You had more employees, but also you had a lot more growth because you got more volume. The retail is about 25% of our business. So we've got uh, right now 17 wholesale distribution centers and 58 retail stores. We carry, of course, uh, passenger tires, any type light truck tire, SUV tire, medium truck tires, farm tires, implement tires, front tractor tires, rear tractor tires. It really changed when I first went there. The mule barn, we loaded tires out of the front door and the back door. <laughs> it was just a little, a little company then. 
Look at it now. It's a lot bigger today. I'd say our sales are getting pretty close to 700 million, 1,500 employees. Now we're buying from everywhere, East Germany and Yugoslavia and Poland and the Slovak Republic. It's going into China and Thailand is a huge country for us today. It all comes back to that one thing. If you have a good product and you take care of your customer and you really value their business, at least in that day and time, you could take four or five guys and start a company and grow it into, in, in their lifetime, uh, 1,200 employees and set a business model in place that will double that company in size. Mississippi is successful in business and industry because of, of the leadership of Mr. Bob Dunlap. The things that he enjoys the most are letters from customers saying that they appreciate and they got good service and for just fixing a fl something as a fixing a flat, you know. But those little things, they just compound business. Absolutely never taking advantage of one soul at any time for any reason. Today, due to all of that, I do the biking for the company, and, and all I have to do is pick up the phone with any biker anywhere and, and just do business. It's just amazing, but it, it, it's take, it takes a long time uh, uh, to accomplish that. Bob, he really grew that place into something, something worth talking about. He talks to everybody like they're, the guy at the bottom of the totem pole is just as important as the, as the guy at the top. He said, everybody says that I'm a really smart businessman, but he said, I, I think I'm a better judge of character and, and knowing who I'm dealing with. And, and he said, that's what made this company was the character of all these men that, that was so clear to see. Bob knows in his heart that the reason he's where he is today is because of all the people that worked at Dunlap and Cow, that continue to work at Dunlap and Cow, and he knows they share his values, and the, the reason the company is where it is today is because of the people that are working there. I knew it's gonna work. If you've got the people, good people, and they have an opportunity to do well for themselves, it's never been a problem. A good friend of mine from North Carolina, he has a daughter that must be a great artist up in New York. And she made a portrait and it hung in the Metropolitan Museum of Art for, for a month or several weeks or whatever it was. But I just always said I wish some old Navy buddies had gone through there and saw me hanging up there in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. But I wouldn't take anything for that picture. And I think it would, it, that's the best place we could put it is, is right up there. Oh, I've been working here for Mr. Bob over 50 years. We hope a lot of, a lot of people not only benefit off of him, it's just everybody around. That company provided jobs for so many people who are making a good living and able to support their families and, and put their kids through school. I actually laid at the front desk because I see Mr. Bobby Dunlap. This man came out from uh, the back and with this cigar in his mouth, the biggest cigar I ever seen in my life. And I said, sir, I'm in need of a job. Whatever I have to do. I mean, I wash the trucks, the 18 wheelers. I cut the grass. Whatever you need me to do, I do it. I mean, just, I just want to work for the company. Started talking about education. And I said, yes, sir, I graduated high school. Currently, I'm in junior college. And he looked at me up and down and said, I'll tell you what. You go back there and tell them to give you a time card. You come here Monday morning. He saw a young man that basically didn't have anything that was struggling educational-wise and determined to go to college. Everybody that worked for that company and everybody that invested in that company's children had the opportunity to get a college education. When I was going to Northwest, you know, he let me come in and work in the morning. I worked in the afternoon until I went to school between time. You know, I had a, he put me on full time so I'd get benefits. He's really interested in educating people and helping them to be self-sufficient 
so that they can take care of themselves and their family. He has contributed millions of dollars enabling Mississippians who maybe otherwise would not have an opportunity to further their education. There's no telling how many students he has helped put through school. And I think the return on that investment, it's not just that person, but it changes, it changes families for generations. He doesn't advertise that he does it. Uh, he just uh, does it. I asked my then store manager about tuition reimbursement that Gateway offered. He sent me over to the office, and I'm, that's when I first met Mr. Dunlap. And this was January 19th, 2012. And I talked to Mr. Dunlap, and January 23rd was Monday, and I was fully enrolled at the University of Mississippi full scholarship. One day I'm sitting in my office and the phone rings. This lady that lives down at Curtis, and she says, I've got a niece that's here babysitting for me while I go to work every day that's wanting to go to college at Northwest. I didn't know the lady that called me, and I sure didn't know her niece. I said, just have her come up here. I'll introduce her to him. And so she comes in, and they get to talking and everything, and I stay a few minutes, and I went on back to work. He ended up paying for her college at Northwest, and but she had to send her him her grades every nine weeks and every semester, and he told her she had to keep at least a uh, B average or something. And then she went to state and he paid for her college there. He met a little girl one time at the downtown grill and she was having a hard time getting through school. He said, give me your name and number and I will, you won't have any worries, I'll just pay for the rest of your tuition. And she went over to a, one of the other men and said, is he serious? Is, you know, is he really going to do this? And he said, if, if Bob Dunlap tells you he's going to do it, it's going to be done. He didn't know who I was never met me, didn't have a clue who I was, but he gave a young guy like me an opportunity to work and earn money the right way. I can't even put into words what it's done for my life, what it's done for my family's life. It's just amazing. Bob has been a mentor. He's been a father figure. He's given, I mean, so much advice on being a man, being responsible, you know, taking care of your business, being able to set goals, succeed at those goals, and keep striving in life. Many, many Mississippians have a higher quality of life because of Mr. Bob Dunlap's leadership. When we first started out, schools having computers, of course, South Manola had zero. And so they came up here and asked him would he help. He said, I'd be glad to. He said, y'all go out and raise what money you can. And, I'll, and the total was $35,000. And he said, I'll pay the difference. Well, they came back and they needed $35,000. <laughs> so he paid it. <laughs> I, I spent 10 years working with the Corps of Engineers, wanting to build a little scout camp, a primitive camp. And I put a little money in it and we raised some money. And we were a good bit short. Well, I went to Bob and said, Bob, we want to build this pavilion. I want you to help me out. Then he welcomed the opportunity. And he was the major donor behind that. And now we have a wonderful primitive camping area called Tent Camp Tubby Tubby that has a pavilion called the Bob Dunlap Pavilion. The football stadium in Batesville, Mississippi, where South Panola High School plays, is Bob Dunlap Stadium. The service to your community and, and the desire to get back is something I think he's always had. And I mean, he has been very you know, fortunate as a businessman, but he just feels compelled to help those around him, and he's, and, and he's been doing it for a long time. Mr. Bob Dunlap cast a long shadow, and yet he is such a humble person, the nicest gentleman you would ever meet. He genuinely cares for people, and he really gets pleasure in life by helping others succeed. Me and my wife got married and then found out we was expecting not too long afterwards, we got a new house. And I had spent, tried to buy everything out of our pockets. And I had spent down to where we just had a little, you know, a little to live on. And I'd got everything but a washer and a dryer. Somehow Mr. Dunlap got word about it. And uh, man, it was, one day I come home and I was shocked. I had a brand new washer and dryer just sitting there waiting on me. A man that successful is willing to take time to help out a me, a little old runt kid from Alligator, Mississippi. And to me that defines, you know, the greatest character there is.
He likes to put on a rough front, but he's got a big heart. His generosity is just incredible, and he, he keeps coming back to what are we going to do to help Mississippi? These are chestnut oaks that we raised from seedlings and planted them, and it's a great tree. So many people, and especially all the going people, they call them sawtooth. It is not a sawtooth oak, it's a chestnut oak. And uh, they, they, they grow fast, and it's just a great tree for wildlife. Bob Dunlap embodies the best of Mississippi. I mean, here's a guy that, that grows up in, in a small uh, farming community of Batesville, Panola County, and starts his business really in, in, a, in a barn. He builds that business into a company that operates all across North America, 2,000 employees, revenues approaching a billion dollars a year. And he's one of Mississippi's greatest success stories. He's, you know, a humble man uh, who's established an unbelievable business enterprise in his community and in our state and across the, the nation. But he still has a passion for helping others. And that's what a philanthropist is. He's just that, that way. He is not looking for publicity, you know, he's just there to help people. This is a quote from him himself. As long as I can get up and go to work, I can continue to help. He's 88 years old, and he still goes to that office every day of the week if he's in town. His ability was to hire good people at their job that helped make this company grow. He's got a successful business, and, and he's got good people. But, you know, to have good people and to keep good people, you got to be the person that's pulling the strings every day and he pulls those strings. Bob always does his best. Maybe that's part of his Eagle Scout training, but he brings out the best in others. And, and, and that baby is one of the secrets of the success of Dunlap and Kyle, is that people uh, give their best and that enables the company to achieve its goals on a global scale. None of us make it alone. It's all, you always have people in the background that are helping you or just trying to steer you in the right direction, whether you know it or not. After he had his little stint with heart trouble, uh, he said, yeah, if I can just be around for another 10 years. So why another 10 years? Well, I'm gonna get 10 more stores open. 10 more stores to employ more people, to give more people a chance to have jobs to work. At the end of our life, when we have to look in the mirror and say, you know, have I made a difference? He certainly can and he continued to do that. <laughs>